Well, it's 3 o'clock. Uh, my name is Adam Matamian. I will be the zoning administrator for Thursday, October 3rd. Uh, the time is 3 p.m. Um, and I will call the meeting to order. Uh, the first item on the agenda is uh, receiving and filing the minutes uh, from the September 19th, 2024 zoning administrator meeting. Um, I uh, That meeting included um, a recusal by myself on one of the items with our city manager, Andy Hall, serving as a, an interim zoning administrator uh, for the uh, item A. Uh, both he and I have reviewed these mit uh, the uh, proposed minutes and um, uh, do not have any um, further edits, so I will move to receive and file those minutes. Uh, the next item on the agenda is oral and written communications. Uh, I don't, there are no members of the public uh, in this room. Um, if anybody shows up later, I will ask them if they have any uh, oral communications. And I have not received any written communications for this meeting. So we will move on to uh, section four, public hearings. Uh, the public hearing process includes a staff presentation, a presentation by the applicant not to exceed 10 minutes, and public testimony not to exceed 3 minutes per speaker. Following closure of the public hearing, the zoning administrator will respond to questions raised during the hearing, discuss the issues, and act upon the matter by motion. Uh, we have one public hearing today, and that is Public Hearing Project 24-200, and uh, Jessica Gatney is our project planner, and I will turn it over to her. Good afternoon. I'm Jessica Gatney, Assistant Planner for the Planning Division. I'm with the applicant, Nima Onerbach, presenting public hearing project 24-200, a request to install a new roof-mounted dish antenna and screening in the form of a tower onto the existing AT&T telecommunications building. The project is located at 401 Calle de los Molinos, located on the northwest corner of Avenida Pico and Calle de los Molinos. Zone Community Curb Marshall 2, Coastal Zone, and West Pico Corridor Specific Plan. The proposed addition would be located on the second floor roof on the northwest portion of the existing building. The proposed dish antenna would be surrounded by a 16 by 12 foot fiberglass reinforced panel architectural screen with a flat roof to match the existing roof. The proposed screening roof has a height of eight feet above the parapet, which is two and a half feet under the 45 foot top of roof height limit. The screen is proposed to be white to match the existing building. The north elevation will be seen from Calle de los Melones heading south towards Avenida Pico. The east elevation is along Calle de los Melones and the south elevation is the most prominent facade which fronts Avenida Pico. The applicant has worked with staff to modify the design. They've proposed to lower the roof two feet and relocate the addition so that it's less visible from Avenida Pico. The applicant also agreed to add trellis landscaping within the arches along the facade to enhance the building and the Avenido Pico corridor. Project findings include that the, the project complies with the general plan, specific plan, design guidelines, and the zoning ordinance. The project is compatible with the character of the neighborhood and the development will not be detrimental to the public health and will meet all FCC standards. The project is categorically exempt from the requirements of CEQA pursuant to guidelines section 15301 class 1 existing facilities because the project involves minor modifications to an existing facility used to provide a public service. Is in a, in a, we'll skip that. The site is not located in an environmentally sensitive area uh, and there's been no public comments received on the item. Therefore, staff recommends the zoning administrator to, to, to determine if the project is exempt from the requirements of CEQA and adopt resolution number 24-018. Yes. <laughs> approving development permit 24-205, subject to the tax conditions of approval. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one question for staff. Did you just reference resolution 
ZA24-018. Is that everything in the project is 019? Is that one? one well, there two, was an error in the law. Okay. So it's actually 18. The resolution you'll sign is 18. Okay. If you do, do choose to sign, of course. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, would the applicant like to make a presentation or, or provide any comments? Um, first off, thank you for meeting. And uh, it's been I think, anticipated that we want, because we're and our client, you know, our company, our client, we're uh, very forward thinking and want to make progress uh, on all of our projects. So um, we appreciate, you know, um, all of the um, feedback that we've received. I think in our correspondence as well, we've, um, I think, fine tuned it to a point where um, it makes sense that it actually has, has come to where it is and um, it's probably better for the city too. So <laughs> we're very thankful for that. All right. Um, and then also, um, I guess, as far as the conditions of approval, my question would be uh, just a technical question. Um, do you want me to include that in the on the planning drawings, or are we good as far as what we've submitted? Typically, we'd like the conditions of approval within the first four pages of the plans. Okay. We'll provide those to you at a later date once this is finished. Okay. okay. Okay, um, I will go ahead and open the public hearing um, and just note for the record that there is uh, there are no members of the public here. Uh, should somebody uh, show up for the next few minutes, I will uh, provide an opportunity for them to speak if they so wish. Um, okay, so I've got a couple questions. Um, the uh, I, I reviewed the staff report, I reviewed the design review subcommittee um, staff report and minutes from that meeting. Um, and I just want to clarify a few things. Um, the treatment of the wall facing Pico and facing north, which would be pointing towards the uh, outlets um, property. Those two walls are proposed to have stucco to match the existing stucco. That's correct, sir. All right. And then on the east elevation, uh, which would be facing Calle de los Molinos, and the west elevation, um, which I'm assuming because I don't see a west elevation um, image in the plans, but the east and west elevations are proposed to have fiber grade, uh, fiberglass reinforced panel architectural screen, um, not stucco. Um, it would only be, there's only a need for the fiber grade, the you know, quote unquote RF screening that allows for the um, signal to get through the wall, only facing Calle de los Molinos. So on the opposite side facing west, which is, um, I believe it's facing just a very high, tall retaining wall, mm -hmm. it's not visible from that side, would also be exterior stucco finish to match. Okay, so if you're driving west on Pico mm -hmm. and you see the wall, you're going to see stucco. You're going to see stucco. Okay. Yeah. Um, what, can you clarify what the, the fiberglass material is? Uh, I looked at the website. And a lot of their materials are, are great, which are see-through. Um, but they do have s a couple panels that are solid panels. Correct. What is this material specifically? So, so it is, um, I've actually just spoke to the rep and we received samples. Um, although I didn't know if that was something that you guys would want to have in your hand. Um, only because the intent, again, is to match the existing building. And I think we're confident that that material will match the existing stucco based on um, how they fabricate that panel. So we can put in the request, is my understanding, speaking with her uh, two days ago, is that um, they can make it so that they can remove, they normally put a grit inside their um, finish on the panel that is made to look like stucco, but they can remove the grit to make it look like a smooth stucco finish. Mm -hmm. um, and then we provide them with the color that gets uh, field verified. 
so in the field, uh, the general contractor, myself, someone goes there and the field verifies what that color is, mm -hmm. and then they can infuse the color through their um, process. Okay, uh, making so. the panel. So essentially, it would, be, it would be made to look almost identical. And from a distance, of course, I don't see how you can... I, I mean, the intent is to be almost identical, but if there is any variance, I don't think you'd be able to see anything from that distance. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's a solid panel. Um, it's uh, uh, manufactured to look... Correct. Uh, similar to, to stucco. Um, and the color will be kind of matched in, in the field. It, and it's fiberglass, uh, just to answer your question, sir, it's a fiberglass reinforced panel. Okay. So, I mean, it's like a plastic, yeah. but it's like a very um, uh, high-tech or fancy way of saying that it's plastic, but it's a nicer uh, manufactured plastic made to look a certain way. Okay. All right, excellent. Um, all right, so uh, just to confirm um, the the location of this was modified a little bit from the design review subcommittee. Correct. Um, so it's um, it's in the location that they were uh, supportive of. It's, yes. Uh, it, and the plans also indicate uh, some landscaping um, uh, being put into the uh, recessed arches along the Pico facade, uh, which is... Uh, I think a really great benefit uh, for this project. Um, so, with that, I can um, support the uh, proposed project, um, and I will just incorporate the um, findings by referencing that um, I can make the findings that are listed. Uh, within the proposed resolution ZA 24-018. Um, uh, however, I do want to clarify a couple of the conditions of approval. Um, so I will discuss those now and then um, make a motion that incorporates this. So because this is going to be um, manufactured per specifications. Um, I want to add a condition and I'll look to the applicant to help me out here. Sure. Is the panel, um, would you have a, would, would they be providing a sample of like the color and the the, the, the finish, so to speak, um, prior to the issuance of building permits? Or would you want to get the building permits and then work through that with them? Um, I would, you know, I, I think to answer your question, Adam, uh, we, we would be okay with providing it to you. The only thing is, is that um, that process of getting it to match, it takes quite a bit. So they don't have a sample just ready for, just ready, <laughs> readily available, I should say. Yeah. So that's something that they have to um, you know, put together and then and then have ready. So I, I'm not certain that, that we could have it before, prior to getting our building permit, okay. so to speak, but um, we can send you, you know, photos. <laughs> so what I'll do is um, I'll add a condition 5.14 that says prior to final inspection, mm. um, the uh, the applicant shall and you let me clarify. Will you get a sample prior to the the, the manufacturing of the entire panel or panels? Uh, yes, because we wouldn't want it to come out to the site without knowing for certain that it's going to match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so a, that's good. Five point one four would be prior to final inspection, the applicant shall provide a sample of the um, fiber grate FRP architectural screen um, to. Uh, for approval, for review and approval by the city planner. Um, 
So the key there is prior to well, prior to inspection. It's prior to installation. Prior to installation okay. um, of the final of the final panel. Um, uh, and I th I think everything in here, everything within the plans is is uh, is clear that the panel is to be white and to be uh, as, as closely matched to the existing stucco as possible. All right. Does that condition make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then uh, I think another condition, we'll call it 1.18, uh, the uh, west elevation of the uh, tower addition um, will be um, finished in stucco to match existing uh, to match existing building and the north and south elevations of the tower. Okay, well with that, uh, I can determine that the project is categorically exempt from the requirements of CEQA pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 15301 and adopt resolution ZA 24-018 approving development permit 24-205 subject to uh, the attached conditions of approval as I uh, just modified. All right. Congratulations, sir. Thank you for working with staff. I really appreciate it. Of course. <laughs> Can't tell you how happy I am. We can move forward and uh, get this thing underway. Absolutely. All right. Um, we have no new business. We have no old business. So I will move to adjourn this meeting to the next regular meeting of the zoning administrator to be held at 3 p.m. on Thursday, October 17th, 2024, at the Community Development Department, first floor community room located at 910 Kai Negocio, San Clemente, California.